Last night I, I got into bed, kind of tired. My wife was feeling a little bit romantic. And she said to me, she said, you usually hold my hand, or she used to hold my hand. So I reached over and held her hand, you know. And she said, well, you used to kiss me. So I made the effort to roll over in the bed, give her a kiss on the cheek. And she said, you used to bite my neck. I got out of bed and headed toward the bathroom. She said, where are you going? I said, I have to go get my teeth. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to use us as an example in, in that joke, but it, it's more powerful if you make it personal. Of course, that's not true. Yes, I do. <laughs> One of, one, one of her things is she checks me out every morning before we leave and she makes sure I'm two things, zipped up and got my teeth in. Because I have left a house more than once to go preach without my teeth. I have done that. And the people said, we didn't notice. <laughs> anyway, John 14 one says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, this morning as we have been entrusted to carry this word of yours, these morsels, in to the family in the house today, we just pray that you will guide the word to where you want it to go and that you will cause it the effect that you want it to cause. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's two thoughts here in this scripture. The heart that is troubled and the heart that needs to believe. It says, let not your hearts be troubled, and then it says, believe in me. So the two thoughts are the heart that is troubled and the heart that needs to believe. We have plenty of things to trouble us. I left a space for an amen. <laughs> Maybe some new virus, there's a monkey virus, a new one that's coming. Things going on in the Middle East. Israel, surrounded by enemies. Wars. Iran is always threatening. Death to Israel, death to the United States. The whole thing is a powder keg that could wind up in World War III. My dad used to say, if there's a World War III, then the Fourth World War will be fought with bows and arrows. My dad used to say that. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. We all know someone who's been hacked. A lot of people, a lot of people get hacked. Usually the bank restores your account. But it's a pain to have to change your passwords and your debit card. I've, been, I've had to do that four times. And the bank always makes it right, but I check my online banking uh, app with my phone probably three times a day maybe four just to make sure there's nothing suspicious going on no no recent expenditures that I can't account for you have to be vigilant you have to keep checking but Jesus said let not your hearts be troubled we have this election coming up we have a candidate that's a communist it seems like half the country thinks like, thinks like that. Marxism. We have at least 10 million illegal aliens in the country and more of them on the way. There may, they may bring, some of them might bring marketable skills, not very many. They bring some of them violence, drugs, gangs, human trafficking. And we don't know if they have diseases. Nobody checks. We're paying for them to live, and we're putting up with their crimes. One candidate wants to stop it, and the other wants it to continue. But Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Social trends are an affront to Christians, or anyone with Judeo-Christian values or ethics. Evil is on the rise. There's, opposite, there's no opposition to the gay lifestyle. It's a sort of a sacred thing. 
even in the church some churches gay is okay but the Bible explicitly forbids homosexuality explicitly Old Testament and New openly gay pastors openly gay bishops gay marriages but Jesus said let not your hearts be troubled and the last most ridiculous is this gender bender business they call it madness the powers that be want school children to be able to change their gender without parental knowledge or permission these poopity blocking chemicals they use are dangerous and they have side effects even Sweden the most uh, progressive country has outlawed that practice but Jesus said let not your heart be troubled the Bible says in Luke 21 starting with verse 9 when you hear of wars and uprisings do not be frightened these things must happen first and then but the end will not come right away then he said to them nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom there will be great earthquakes famines and pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven i'll tell you what if covid wasn't a pestilence what was that was a pestilence verse 12 but before all this they will seize you and persecute you they will hand you over to the synagogues and put you in prison and you'll be brought before kings and governors and all on account of my name and so you will bear testimony to me but make up your mind not to worry there it is again let not your heart be troubled not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict you will be betrayed even by parents brothers and sisters relatives and friends and they will put some of you to death everyone will hate you because of me but not a hair of your head will perish stand firm and you'll win life and Luke 21 26 says men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after the things which are coming to the earth for the powers of heaven will be shaken and Jesus said let not your hearts be troubled believe God and believe in me Jesus asked this question mark 4 35 to 41 he says that day when evening comes he said to his disciples let us go over to the other side leaving the crowd behind they took him along just as he was in the boat there were also other boats with him so first of all it says they took him the disciples took over they brought him into the boat he was being rescued from the weariness of ministry ministering to the crowds pressing up against him and his wish was to go to the other side and they took him into the boat it says they took him just as he was he was probably so exhausted maybe they had to pick him up and carry him into the boat and he fell asleep no doubt as soon as he got into the boat and there were other boats it says with him they left the crowd on the shore on the beach but some traveled along because they had access to a boat or to other boats and they were with him they were probably disciples that had some of those disciples were fishermen in verse 37 a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped and Jesus in 38 was in the stern sleeping on a cushion the disciples woke him and said to him teacher don't you care if we drown <clears throat> he got up rebuked the wind and the waves quiet be still and the wind died down and was completely calm and he said to his disciples here's the question why 
are you so afraid? Then the next question, he said, do you still have no faith? They had traveled with him. They had seen the miracles that he worked. They had been taught by him. He expected them to have more faith. He expected them not to be afraid. He expected them to have no fear. They were terrified <clears throat> and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. They were still afraid, terrified in fact. <clears throat> but they should have been rejoicing because they were saved. We should be rejoicing because we're saved instead of being fearful about the things that we see happening. Philippians 4, 6 to 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace is beyond comprehension. How can they be so peaceful when there's so much turmoil all around them? Because Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Don't be bothered by these things. The enemy wants us to be in fear. Fear leads to hatred. Hatred plays into the hand of the enemy. There's a place for fear. Even in the heart of a believer, if I was in a corral with a raging bull, I would probably have enough fear to leave. <laughs> Maybe that's just good sense. The term fear not is in the Bible 365 times. You could quote that, you could quote a fear not scripture 365 times, one a day and not run out until the end of the year. Look, I'm trying to say that we don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that we don't have anything to worry about. There's lots of worries in this life. We worry about the church, you know, we worry about where's all the people. We worry about finances. We worry about the car wearing out. Am I gonna have enough money to fix the car? What if my roof leaks? What if the hen quits laying? What if the cow dries up? What if the well runs dry? There's all kinds of worries in this life, but there are concerns that we can't do anything about. That's when we have to trust God and not fear. When we fear something that's out of our control, like the political events, there's only two things we can do about that. Vote and pray. Let's not get riled up about things that we can't control. Psalm 23 verse, for even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What valley can you walk through? Or what valley are you in? It causes you to be concerned, to be in fear, to be in trepidation. That he is not in there with you, because he is. Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. From all my fears. John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. There it is again. Fear not. Great advice right from the mouth of Jesus. So what has the world given us? Anxiety, worry, fear, chaos. <laughs> Those are all territories of the devil who happens to be the God of this world. He wants us to be in fear. 
He wants us to be in fear of what might be. He wants us to be terrified about things that haven't been even happened. If he can occupy our thoughts with negativity, he can render us ineffective in carrying the gospel, and that's what we're called to do. We, of course, need to be aware of what's happening around us, but we shouldn't be dominated by the negativity. I listen to people's problems, and as a pastor, I take it to heart. I watch Fox News in the morning, and maybe a dose after supper, just to be aware of what's going on. But what I don't do is to allow unsettling information to have a major place in my heart. Fear will not rule, not in my heart. With God's help, not in your hearts. Aches and pains will always be there. But the goodness of God is always there too. Should I dwell on aches and pains or on the goodness of God? As a pastor, it concerns me when people leave the church. Should I dwell on negativity or should I dwell on the goodness of God? God is so good. Jesus suffered and died for me. He set me free from the law of sin and death. And God has called me into the ministry. God is so good. I never thought that at my age that I would be ever able to be a, a pastor like this. I started studying for ministry when I was 65. That was 12 years ago. I thought I would always be a, a fill-in minister or an interim pastor. I never thought I would be so blessed as to be a lead pastor. But here I am. I could say, well, I'm not a real pastor, but I did sleep in a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> but God is so good. He works things out. And he will always prevail. And I don't need to be in fear about anything. So what are we going to do when negativity is in our face? Fuss and fret? Well, you can do that if you want to. What did Jesus recommend? He recommended faith. Our text in John 14, 1, Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. There you have it. The one word, believe. Believing that everything is going to be a disaster. Believe that your life is a total mess. Believe that the country is headed for a disaster. Woe is me. Woe is me. Do you want to live like that? I don't. I'm not believing for negative things. I'm believing for the goodness of God. And that's what reigns in my heart. Life in this world is trouble. It is trouble. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. God doesn't spare us from hardship, but he keeps us through it. Let me say that again. God doesn't spare us from hardship, but he keeps us through the hardship. <clears throat> Whatever you're concerned about should not dominate your heart and mind. The goodness of God should dominate the heart and mind. They can't both dominate. And they can't coexist. So let it be God. So let's pray and believe. If you're worried about the elections, pray, believe, and vote. Some say vote your conscience. I say vote Judeo-Christian ethics. Marxism is not holy, it's ungodly. Life, gay lifestyle is ungodly. 
Neither all is all the rest of that alphabet stuff. It's unholy and ungodly. No matter what comes your path, fear not. That's Jesus recommends that. Do not let your hearts be troubled. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. In Psalm 37, verse 11, verses. Do not fret because of those who are evil. Or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. So we have so many things around us, in front of us, that can cause us to have a troubled heart. But you can't have, you don't have two hearts, you only have one. <laughs> so you can't have a troubled heart and a believing heart both at the same time. So what's it gonna be? Let, your, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in me, believe. So our heart needs to be all about God and all about faith and all about Him. We will have concerns about the things we see, but let's not allow them to dominate us. Let's not allow them to cloud our, our every, everything that we do and think. Let God dominate. The goodness of God dominate everything we do and everything that we think. Amen? I guess I said enough about that. Would you stand? But our Father, once again, is so nice, so delightful, and so joyful to be in your house, Lord, surrounded by people of like precious faith, the family of God. Lord, help us to remember these words. Let not your heart be troubled when we see troublesome things on our horizon. Help us just to be faithful, to be believing in you, because we know that in the end, your victory will reign supreme. Help us just to identify with that, keep it on our hearts, not forget that you are God and there is no other. And we will, we will have victory with you, with you, and help us to have that kind of an attitude as we go through life, that you are with us, no matter what, you are with us, in Jesus' name, amen.